We're diving back into Major League Baseball. We have Gary and Thorne, DraftKings, and RotoWire's Eric Halterman joining us. It's time for MLB Cover the Bases. These guys will give their favorite DK Sportsbook bets in the following categories for tonight's games. Gary and hello. Uh, let's start first with run line or money line bet that you're interested in tonight. Yeah, uh, probably not the best idea to be backing the Twins in 2021, but I really don't mind them being slight favorites on this slate going up against the Los Angeles Angels, specifically Andrew Heaney, who had had an up-and-down season to begin with through the first three months of 2021, but his July has been atrocious. In fact, his last four starts, he's got a 9.33 ERA. He's giving up 2.9 home runs per nine and the twins happen to hit left-handed pitching very well for all their faults. They still hit lefties to the seventh best OPS in all of baseball. So you've got Andrew Heaney on one side, and then you've got Kenta Maeda on the other for the twins. And he is finally turning in to the Kenta Maeda we've known and have come to known for the past half decade. He's got a 1.69 ERA across his past three starts. His strikeout rate in that span is up over 40%. So I just think you have two pitchers heading in opposite directions here. The Angels offense has been scuffling a lot as of late. So I will take the Twins at home, minus 140. Hi, Eric. Nice to meet you. My name's Brendan. It's our first time meeting and first time speaking to each other. How about a uh, run line or money line you're interested in? Yeah, nice to meet you too. I'll hopefully... uh give you a good pick leave a good first impression here but uh we'll check back on that tomorrow i'm bad at Um, first impressions too so it's okay all right well here's a definitely incorrect pick to make you think less (laughs) of me and that's uh i like atlanta minus 135 over the phillies tonight um two offenses are pretty similar uh atlanta's 14th on the season by wrc plus phillies are 17th uh though of course atlanta is not the same offense without ronald acuna jr there so consider that close to a wash, but on the pitching side, I think the gap between Charlie Morton and Matt Moore is quite large. Charlie Morton looked like he was fading with age, as you'd expect for a guy in his late thirties last year. I uh, saw his strikeout rate dip down to a roughly average, slightly above average 24.7%, but that's up three whole ticks this season, combined it with league average walk rate and a better than average ground ball rate leading to a well-deserved 369 ERA. On the other side, Matt Moore, you know, he may once have been a better prospect than both Mike Trout and Bryce Harper, but that clearly has not been the case over his career. I think it was a decent punt by the Phillies uh, to sign him for cheap over the offseason after he had uh, a decent short season in Japan, but hasn't hasn't really shown that he learned something new and exciting to become a different guy than he's been for most of his career. Uh, had terrible start to the year, 982 ERA and three starts before hitting the COVID-19 injury list in mid-April. He does have a 324 ERA since then, but that's not backed up by his ERA estimators. Uh, XFIP has him more than a run and a half worse than that. Um, and on the season, his 525 ERA looks well-deserved. He's just below average across the board, doesn't strike out enough guys, walks too many, doesn't keep the ball on the ground. Uh, so I think... With a starter like Charlie Morton going for Atlanta, they should be much more than minus 135 against Moore. Okay, let's go to some game totals. Looking at the DK Sportsbook, ranging from as low as seven and a half runs total to nine and a half on tonight's slate. Gary, and what's a game total that intrigues you? Yeah, I think I'm going to look at Tampa and Cleveland. Uh, right now, the game total is nine. I'm going to take the over. Uh, These are not two offenses that are, you know, in any way spectacular, particularly Cleveland, who have not hit well and have struck out quite a bit so far in July. However, you've got two starting pitchers in this game who have been better when used in a different role, let's say. Uh, Luis Patino has been better as a reliever so far this season. He hasn't gotten a lot of run to begin with, but his last two starts in particular, uh, nine earned runs in those two games he has just looked overwhelmed and overmatched at the major league level the last two times we have seen him and then you have cal quantrill who actually began the year as a really nice bullpen piece for cleveland and then suddenly he had to move to the rotation out of just sheer necessity and he has struggled immensely in that span Uh, nine starts he has an era of 5.68 as a starter and his strikeout rate is just 15 percent so I think you can project a lot of contact for Tampa Bay. And one thing we know the Rays are going to do 
is chalk that lineup full of left-handed bats, and Quantrill has struggled immensely within that split. So it just seems like the Rays could have an offensive field day here. So I'm going to take the over. Eric, how about a game total tonight? I'm going with the under in the Angels Twins game that's set at nine and a half. Uh, the teams are averaging 9.4 runs per game. So if they can exactly hit that number, uh, we'll be safe by a tenth of a run. Uh, basically, all we need is better than average pitching tonight. And I think we're going to get that. Uh, Gary and touched on the good things about Kenta Maeda. He had a really bad start to the season, but has looked much more uh, like himself in his last few starts. Um, specifically suddenly striking out the world, uh, 42.4% strikeout rate over that stretch. Um, I don't think he's going to be as good as he was last year when he was dominant out of nowhere, but he's been a quite good starter for most of his career. And then I have a little bit more faith, I think, in Andrew Heaney than Gary and seem to. Uh, on the season, a 556 ERA was clearly terrible, but most of the ERA estimators are like a full run and a half better than that. Um, he has run into some bad form lately, uh, which this year means you should check his spin rates. And they're not down much. They are a little bit down, I think, from May, but not far down from where he was in April. So unless he started using something for only a couple starts and then backed off again, I, I don't think he stands out to me as one of those very obvious guys where we shouldn't treat him like the same guy he was in the past. He's got a 28% strikeout rate and a 7.5% walk rate. Uh, that's guy, guys like Lance Lynn, Charlie Morton, Joe Musgrove. All those guys are within one percentage point to both of those marks. Uh, so it is a recipe that should lead to success. He doesn't keep the ball on the ground well, but on the whole, it still is a pretty good set of secondary uh, statistics. So I, I have enough faith in Heaney that I'm going to take the under here. We are covering the bases in Major League Baseball, looking at sports betting across DraftKings, and uh, we're now going to move to the a pitching prop, Gary. And what intrigues you there? Yeah, I'm going to go with the strikeout prop for Adbert Azale. Uh, over four and a half strikeouts is minus 145. He's actually been struggling a lot in his past six starts, but the biggest blemish that Azale has is the fact he can't get out left-handed bats that's specifically the issue. His numbers against right-handed batters, even in this poor six-start stretch, are immaculate. Uh, it's completely left-handed bats. And if there's one thing that St. Louis does not have, it's left-handed bats. They actually have the most right-on-right -right plate appearances of any National League team so far this season. So this is a lineup where Adzale should really thrive and pitch deep into this game, maybe even go six innings. And if he does that... I think this is a pretty easy number to clear, especially considering he's got a 29% strikeout rate against right-handed batters so far in 2021. So I would take advantage of what I think is a pretty low prop. Eric, how about a pitcher prop for us? I'm going with another low prop for a pitcher I like, and that's Tanner Houck at four and a half strikeouts, but I'm actually going to take the under. Uh, he does strike out guys uh, well above average last year in his debut, I think just over 30% in a small sample uh, and just shy of 27% in an even smaller sample this year and a good strikeout rate at the AAA level. The problem is he just doesn't have the innings, um, which means he's only hit that over in one of his four MLB appearances and two of his six in the minors. He's only lasted more than four innings in two of his 10 total appearances this season. And his last time out on the mound was against uh, these same Yankees had a three inning save in which he struck out three batters uh, through 49 pitches. So I can't see him asked to throw much more than, you know, maybe 65, 70 pitches here. And I do think he'll strike out batters at a fine rate, but that might be four strikeouts in four innings. Uh, so I just don't think this is the time to go with the over on Tanner Hawk, though I definitely like him down the stretch once he gets stretched out. All right, we'll make the turn for home and wrap it up with a hitting prop, Garyan. Yeah, there's some fun uh, total base matchup props on the DraftKings Sportsbook today. So I'm going to take a look at a matchup of a former MVP versus the likely MVP this season. We've got Josh Donaldson total bases up against Shohei Otani. I will take Donaldson at plus 110. Uh, this mostly comes down to the matchup, the pitching matchup I was talking about before, and we talked about a lot so far in this segment. Uh, that would be Andrew Heaney versus Kenta Maeda. Uh, Donaldson though, you know, most of the headlines he's garnered this season have been like Garrett Cole adjacent, not really talking about his play all that much, but he's quietly been very good by most 
estimators. Uh, his expected WOBA is right up there with his best seasons in Toronto, and he's hit left-handed pitching exceedingly well. He's got a 288 average, a 550 slugging percentage within the split, and he's got a 153 WRC plus against lefties so far this season. Otani's amazing, obviously, but I think Kenta Maeda has been pitching really well. I think he can neutralize him, and I think Donaldson is a big day. So I will take that profit plus money. Take us home here, Eric, a hitter prop for tonight. Yeah, looking at some home run props, I like throwing a dart at Ozzy Albies at plus 320. Uh, the main things I look for in a home run prop are a hitter-friendly park, which certainly describes Citizens Bank Park. I think it's the most hitter-friendly park on the slate. And then a pitcher who gives up a lot of contact and a lot of contact in the air. And that's Matt Moore, as I talked about earlier. He's got a below average strikeout rate and ground ball rate. So he's definitely somebody you can hit homers off of. And Albies, while he's a switch hitter, he is far better against lefties. Uh, over the course of his career, he slugs 567 against southpaws versus just 435 against righties. Uh, to put it another way, he homers in just over 5% of his plate appearances against lefties and just under 3% against righties. So he is a legitimate power bat uh, when he's swinging from the right side, and he's got all the circumstances lining up perfectly to give him a good shot at a homer here.